The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. But there are certain things that are better than money. In 1981, Bob Marley died. At the time he died, he was one of the richest in the world. He was arguably the most popular person on earth at that time. Bob Marley was arguably the most popular person. So he had a lot of friends and a lot of loved ones. But his money and his friends could not save him from death. Not at all. So Bob Marley died. See, things like good health is better than money. Peace is better than money. Wisdom is better than money, but the greatest of all is good name. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says this, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. I want to take that again. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So a good name is far esteemed than stature. A good name towers above education. It's worth more than property. A good name or a great name does not only bring security to the bearer of the name, but it's also a purchasing power. You see, when you have a good name, it buys things that even money cannot buy for you, like favors. Sometimes you may enter an interviewing hall. Then the panel who are supposed to interview you, you go in there under some kind of feeling because you don't know how um, you are going to be treated. You are prepared overnight. You just entered the room, and then the one who is chairing the panel says, what? You look like a friend. Do you know Mr. Nyamiche? Says, yes, sir. He's my father. Oh, that man. That man was a good man. Now, if you don't go through the interview, and then a VV, how? Now, see, you realize that that good man, that good man, even though he's dead, that good man, his name can invoke blessing on the descendants and those who are associated with that particular name. That is why God told Abraham, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Once your name is great, you can be a blessing. Please protect your name. Don't just be careless with your name. Protect your name. Be very, very careful. Soon we will not be here. What will be left is good name. You see, good names outlives the bearers. Such people, we say they never die. Not that they are not dead, but their names will remain with us forever. Tomorrow you may not be occupying this position, but what will take the position and occupy it forever will be your good name. But brothers and sisters, good names are end. The bigness of a man is determined by the cause the person lives for and the price he's willing to pay to achieve it. How big a person is, is determined by the cause he or she lives for and the price that fellow is willing to pay to achieve it. We therefore have to be very careful and deliberately invest in our names as a unique entity on earth. All of us are born with gifts and graces. And all of us, by the grace of God, gives us opportunities. 
please, when you have this opportunity, try and work very hard on your name. I'm not talking about titles and people of position. Such people could be accorded some protocols because of the positions they occupy. But what I mean is this, Job 29. I'll just read about Job so that at least, uh, just to illustrate what I mean by good names and ending good names. Job 29, I'll start from 7. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The young men saw Job and they stepped aside, and the elderly men stood to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouth with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouth. Whoever heard me spoke well of me, and those who saw me commended me. No wonder even God himself commended Job. Now listen to verse 12. How could he get this great name? Because I rescued the poor who cried for help. And the fatherless who had none to assist them. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my rope and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. So when they saw him coming, they stood. Look at what he did. He went down and picked the poor. He invested into human beings. Let me say that the majority of us here are connected to parliament. And we need to serve people. Mother Teresa worked in the ghettos. But when she died, the whole world stood in awe of her. Please. Good names are better than good positions. A great man indeed, in all respect. And for Job, the respect came naturally because the people saw that he was invested into human beings. And that one lifted him above his peers. Let me say this. If you want to have a good name or a great name, you have to make some sacrifices. Like Jesus, go the extra mile. You have to make yourself nothing. You see, but leadership sometimes is interpreted as showmanship. It's to make your enemies fear you and you, even your, your friends admire you. So the way we carry ourselves, it doesn't even allow the common person to come close to you. And how much more to bless them. Please, let's loosen up and let us work rather on a good name. It is better than riches. Beyond all that I've said, I want to offer just one suggestion to all of us who desire to have good name. You need to serve humanity. Now, the suggestion that I'm going to offer is this. Live and work for the good of people. Live and work for the good of people. Maybe I should turn here and look at the face of my parliamentarians. You are making democracy too expensive. Yeah. The monetization of what we call democracy is dangerous. Soon, we are not going to have good leaders because we will need people who have cash. And it doesn't matter where they got the money from. They will win the constituency election. Now, this thing is dangerous. If we think that we cannot follow this American democracy, please, let us stop it. Let us design something that will help this nation. It is dangerous. 
And I'm even afraid of the future. I'm afraid of the future. How can you deceive people just by buying cutlass for them? And you pride yourself in it. What a shame. I pray that God will save this land. God will save this land. Because many of us are poor. Instead of investing into them, you deceive them with lanterns and cutlasses. May God have mercy upon us. See, when you do this, the day you are no longer the constituent leader, nobody cares about you. Now we should all critically examine the course we live for and the price we are willing to pay to achieve it. Now, why are you in politics? Why are you a pastor? Why are you a teacher? Why are you a lawyer? Why are you a chief? What is your motive?